the Lord says, if these are my prophets, then why don't they plead with me? Why don't they intercede? Why aren't they asking me to soften the heart of the king per se, or to bring the vessels back? You see, they were caught up in their own emotions of what they wanted to happen. They got caught up in a delusion. The Bible speaks about that, that when we don't make room for the truth, he will give us over to the delusions of our heart because we rather trust in a lie than believe in his truth, his word. And so I love how he says, if these were my men, if these were true prophets with a voice in the heart of God, why haven't they interceded? Why haven't they displayed my heart for the king? So we just, this is why I say, as your job to submit, what does that look like? Prayer, worship, praying to God, worshiping, asking God to intercede, trusting God through the process, knowing that he is the only one that can save. We have so many people that don't understand they've gotten caught up in idolatry because they put their hope and their trust in one man. And God will not be mocked. He will share his glory with no one. So it is my prayer that people would wake up that they will not allow the enemy to use them and divide the body of Christ any longer, but that we unite together under Christ. Hey guys, welcome to Pearls of Eden. Surprise! I am back for another word. Uh, I was doing my devotion and the Lord heavily impressed upon me. This was a word that he wanted me to come and share with his people. So here I am in obedience. This is a word of correction. This is not a word, I, I wanna say a word of correction is for us all. The word of God is so sharp. It cuts through all of the BS and it gets right to the truth. It gets right to the heart of the matter. And so we're gonna jump in and I pray that this word bless you. I pray that God gives you ears to hear and a heart to receive. Father God, as I deliver the word that you've placed in me, I pray that I will decrease so that you shall increase. Think through my mind, speak through my vocal cords. That is my, this is my prayer, that you are glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. So I've talked to you all about the importance of respecting authority, particularly the authority of the land. I'm talking about kings. I'm talking about presidents. You know, we have to be so careful that we don't let our emotions rule and not the word of God. God's word has to be true. And every man, a liar. What does that mean? That the word of God must stand. I don't care if a prophet tells you this or that. If it goes against the word of God, you have to reject it. And I think we're in a season where we have so many people that have a gift of what seems as prophetic or prophecy. But with prophecy and as prophets and prophetesses of God, you have to have a pure heart for what the Father is saying. That means you have to have the courage to change courses whenever the Lord says go, whenever the Lord says come back, whatever the Lord says shift. You have to be able to do that. And you have to do it with a pure heart. So you cannot afford to let your emotions rule you because then you will fall into deception. And once you fall into deception, it's very hard to come out of it. So we need to be praying for men and women of God that their eyes would be open, that they would have a heart to receive the truth of God, that they would come out of deception and walk in the truth of God to walk by his spirit, 
we have to intercede as men and women of God. So that is my prayer that the body of Christ, that we would unite and walk in truth, that we won't get distracted by anything that seeks to keep our eyes off of Jesus. Because there's a lot of distractions. There's a lot of people telling you to rebel and buck the system that you don't have to honor the president. I mean, after all, did he really win the election? I mean, that was a stolen election. No matter what the factors are, no matter how true that is or is not, guess what? He is in the office. So what does the Bible tells us? Well, the word of God says that we have to subject ourselves under the leadership of the land, meaning that we have to intercede and pray for the leaders that we have to honor. We don't speak bad. The Bible says you don't speak bad of the dignitaries and those in leadership positions. So we have to keep a close guard over our lips, our tongue, our, the thoughts of our heart even. Because out of the abundance of one's heart is what we'll speak. And you know, the body of Christ has a real... We got to work on that. Because every four years, depending on who's in office... Depends on who we honor. Depends on who we pray for. That is not the heart of God. See, the word of God will keep you consistent. And you will be able to pray for those in leadership from a pure place. Because you have the heart of God. Knowing that the king's heart is in his hand. And he's able to sway it any way that he wants. Meaning that he can take what even is meant for evil and make it for your good because we know all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. So your trust has to be kept in God. So what happens when that's tested? What happens when you have to come under the yoke of submission? Will you be obedient? In Jeremiah 27, we see that there is a man of God and we see that there are a lot of false prophets that he's coming against. Because the false prophets are saying, rebel, you don't have to respect Nebuchadnezzar. You won't come under the yoke of submission. There, Everything's going to be just peachy. But the man of God, Jeremiah, was sent to tell them, you will. You will have to follow under the submission. Fall under the submission. Carry the yoke of submission. And bow your neck under Nebuchadnezzar's rulership. What does that mean? It simply means to honor the king, submit to him, meaning that you are to intercede. You are to pray for him. You are to respect him. You are not to disrespect the king. And let me just tell you something. I did a, oh my gosh, a lesson about the three Hebrew boys, maybe about six or eight months ago. Because I think it's a perfect lesson how you can stand up for what you believe in a righteous way without dishonoring the king. You see, they were thrown in the fire because they would not bow to the music. Because they knew that they should honor only God. That they weren't going to worship the statue. And they were convicted to stand for God in his ways. But even when they were brought in front of Nebuchadnezzar and he gave them an opportunity to, I guess, backtrack. They said, your majesty, that is a term of honor. They said, even if you were to do this or that, we cannot go one word above what our God has told us to do. They were respectful. Your majesty. And even when they were thrown in the fire, God was with them. Their trust and their hope was not in the king, but it was in Christ. He walked with them through the fire. And even then, Nebuchadnezzar, they witnessed to him. Because Nebuchadnezzar said, your God, he is the only God. Blessed be Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. And he promoted them. But they never dishonored the king. So there's a way to do things. But you can't be out here in these streets dishonoring leadership. Just talking all kinds of ways about authority God says you won't be blessed if you do that don't do it so I just really want to talk to y'all about that let me go ahead and turn it down I'm sorry guys all right so Jeremiah goes to them and he says this is what the Lord Almighty the God of Israel says 
Tell this to your masters with my great power and outstretched arm. I made the earth and its people and the animals that are on it. And I give it to anyone I please. Isn't that important to understand that God is in charge and he can give his authority to rule to anyone that he chooses to, whether you like them or not? Do y'all realize that God can even use kings and presidents as a form of correction for his people? Yeah, because we're, we're learning something through it all. When we're walking in the blessing, um, you can kind of just get carried away. But when you're under the rod of correction, it's a time of reflection. It's a time where you're growing, you're thinking, you're seeking God even more. And he's teaching us through something through that. And a lot of people don't like to be corrected. What does the Bible says? No discipline at the time feels good, but it's for your benefit. And we have to remember that, you know, God's people, we grow the most, we thrive the most. And people don't like to hear this, but we do under persecution. We thrive the most, we grow the most. And most people do. When you're challenged and you're putting a new environment and you're forced to learn new things, you're forced to grow, do things differently, um, you tend to have a greater appreciation for things. And you're also growing and learning new skills. And there's just so much that happens. And so it's really important that we can thrive under persecution, even more so. So it's just something to think about. It says, now I will give all your countries into the hands of my servant Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. I will make even the wild animals subject to him. All nations will serve him and his son, and his grandson, until the time for his land comes, then many nations and great kings will subjugate him. And I think this is really powerful because everyone has their turn to rule and reign. And in this season, he's in power. But the Bible says there'll come a time where there will be great men and kings that will come and subjugate him. So I just think, you know, no, no, nothing lasts forever. Trouble don't last always. But God wants us to be respectful and honorable. He wants us to always keep the word first in our lives because it's going to keep us consistent in him. It says, if however, and this was the warning that Jeremiah gave. It says, if however, any nation our kingdom will not serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, or bow its neck under his yoke. I will punish that nation with the sword, famine, and plague, declares the Lord, until I destroy it by his hand. So do not listen to your prophets, your diviners, your interpreters of dreams, your mediums, or your sorcerers, who tell you, you will not serve the king of Babylon. He's saying, don't listen to these people. They're going to lead you astray. They're telling you to rebel, to buck against King Nebuchadnezzar, to rebel the system. You don't have to honor him. And he's saying, the Lord has not said so. In fact, he's saying, if you will honor the king, if you will bow your neck in submission is what that means. And you will serve the king and honor and respect. You will be promoted in the land. You will prosper. You will till the land. You will work the land. You will, you will even live in houses you didn't build. And you will drink from vineyards you didn't dig. You know, God's ways are not ours. And that is why it's so important that we let the word be true. The word is powerful. The word is true. You get caught up in your feelings, it's not going to be productive. You get caught up in letting your emotions rule. That's what the enemy plans and bets on you doing. You don't want to ever get caught up in your emotions. Always let the word be true. And so he's saying you will be blessed if you bow your neck under the submission of King Nebuchadnezzar. And so I say that because, you know, instead of condemning and speaking bad about presidents 
Joe Biden or President Trump or whoever's in leadership. It is your job as a believer to lift them up in prayer because it is your prayers that God honors. It is your prayers that change things. And do you know, because you honor the word of God, he will honor you. And the same people that are experiencing famine and plague and desolation, you will be like those, the Israelites who lived in Goshen. You'll have light. You will have prosperity. Why? Because you do things God's way. And that's just so powerful to understand. And so I really feel like the Lord just sent me on to say, check your motives, check your emotions, make sure that you are walking in the light. Don't get caught up in your emotions. There's a lot of people that are well-meaning, but they need prayer because they're leading people into rebellion. And that is not of God. If it goes against the word of God, you have to reject it. What did the Bible say? Even if an angel of light comes and tells you to go against the word of God, you have to reject it. Remember the story of the old prophet versus the young prophet? He was given specific instructions. When you leave the city, don't go this way. Don't eat or drink. And then you have the old prophet that came with a word and said, you know, oh, you can do this. I'm a prophet too. And the young prophet ended up getting eaten by a lion. Because how many of you know that the lion, he seeks to what? Kill, steal, and destroy. And that old prophet was the fall of that young prophet because the young prophet didn't have the wisdom enough to know that the instructions of the Lord, the word of the Lord has to be true. No matter what anybody, what it, no matter what religious person, no matter what high ranking prophet says this or that, the word has to be true. Because as we saw with that story with that young man, he listened to that old prophet who was at one time anointed. And guess what? He was destroyed. So what is the message, Father? Guys, we have to honor the word of God, apply the word of God in season, out of season, not just when it feels good, not just when the person that we like is in office. And we're like, yeah, be careful what you say. Be careful what you think, really. Because out of the abundance of your heart is what you'll speak. Honor the king. Honor the president. How can you do that? By interceding, by praying, by lifting him up, by not cursing him, but blessing him. Yeah. The Lord says, bless even your enemies, right? Bless your enemies. Even those who don't wish you well, bless them. That's what the word of God says. So anyone that's telling you to do differently, are they truly speaking from the heart of God? We have to make sure we're coming from the heart of God. You still have people that talk so differently terrible about President Trump. Why? Have the heart of God and you will be blessed in the land. And so what we see at the end of this chapter, guys, that they end up going off into captivity, just as Jeremiah prophesied. The vessels were not returned when they thought they would be returned. But in God's timing, everything was restored. And we have to remember that. It is in God's timing, not ours, that everything will be restored. I want to read to you Isaiah 6 in closing. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on a, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. The train of his robe filled the temple. The robe represents all of the victories that God has had. 
because back in the ancient days, the kings would cut off a piece of the robe of the one that they secured the victory from and they would stitch it to, to their robe and they had a train of all of their victories. And the Bible tells us that our God, our Father, he has a train that fills the room, the temple of all the victories that he's won because we know that our God has never, ever lost a battle and he never will. So that's important to know. Why do I say that? Keep your trust in the one who knows the beginning from the end. Keep your trust in the one that has never lost a battle. He's got you. Let the word be true. All right, guys, I love you. I pray that this was a word that spoke to you that we all can look at it and see how we can grow from it and how we can stay in the will of God. All right, guys, I love you and I will see you soon. Bye.